Welcome to the deep dive. You know, we often talk about scientific breakthroughs on the show, and uh, many are incremental, important steps forward. But every so often, something feels, well, truly revolutionary, something that might just shift our whole understanding of what's possible. Today, we're diving into exactly one of those moments. We're looking at some really groundbreaking research out of Australia. They're repurposing mRNA technology. Yeah, that same tech from the COVID-19 vaccines, but uh, this time. The target is HIV. So our mission for this deep dive is to explore how this mRNA approach actually works. You know, how it tackles HIV's most stubborn challenge, what it could mean for the, well, millions living with the virus globally, and honestly, the broader implications for medicine overall. It's pretty exciting stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's unpack this. So maybe let's start with the background. Why has a cure for HIV been so elusive? I mean, we have powerful antiretroviral therapies, RT, right? They've been transformative. But they don't eliminate the virus completely. Why not? What's the core problem there? Yeah, that's the uh, the fundamental hurdle. It comes down to something called HIV reservoirs. Reservoirs, okay. Think of them as like hidden spots in the body, little mm -hmm. bunkers almost. Mm -hmm. So when someone's on RT, the treatment suppresses the active virus really well, it makes it undetectable in blood tests, which is fantastic. Right. Allows people to live long lives. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, our key doesn't really touch these reservoirs. These are cells where the virus is just dormant, yeah. hiding out. Could be for years, often in places like, you know, lymph nodes, the gut, maybe even the brain. So the drugs just can't get to them there. Pretty much. They're invisible to the treatment while they're dormant. And the moment treatment stops, the virus comes back. It comes roaring back. The virus reactivates from these reservoirs and starts replicating again. It undoes all the progress. It's this persistent hidden threat that makes a true cure incredibly difficult to achieve. Wow. So it's not just about suppression. It's always there, kind of waiting. For right. someone living with HIV, even with an undetectable viral load, that must mean constant vigilance. Right. It absolutely does. It means right. daily medication for life potentially. Mm. And while RT is amazing, it's not always easy. There can be side effects. There's the cost, the daily reminder, mm -hmm. and the psychological weight of knowing the virus isn't truly gone, just yeah. suppressed. You know, we're talking about around 40 million people living with HIV today. 40 million? Yeah. So our key offers management, a vastly improved life, but a cure. That's liberation. Liberation from the daily pills, the potential long-term health issues that can still pop up, the stigma. Mm. These reservoirs are the reason we don't have that cure yet. It's why scientists have had to think, well, way outside the box. Right. It really highlights that frustrating reality, doesn't it? A chronic condition you manage but can't quite defeat. But now this breakthrough from the Peter Doherty Institute for Infection and Immunity in Australia. And it uses mRNA, like you said, like the COVID vaccines most of us are familiar with now. OK, here's where it gets really interesting. They're packing this mRNA into what are they called? Lipid nanoparticles, tiny fat bubbles. That's it lipid nanoparticles, or LNPs. And this is really the clever part, building on those COVID vaccine learnings. So how do they work? How do these little bubbles target HIV? Well, think of them as like tiny delivery drones. They're designed to be stealthy, bypass defenses, and deliver their payload, the mRNA, specifically into those HIV-infected cells. The ones where the virus is hiding in the reservoirs? Exactly. The very cells that form the reservoirs. Mm -hmm. And once the LNP gets inside one of those cells, the mRNA it carries sends out a specific signal. A signal? What kind of signal? It's basically an instruction. It tells the dormant sleeping virus inside that cell to uh, wake up, to come out of hiding. Wow. So it literally forces the virus to reveal itself. That's the idea. It flips a switch, makes the invisible visible again. That sounds huge. Because RT only works on active virus, right? Precisely. Art suppresses replicating virus. It couldn't touch the dormant stuff in the reservoirs because it couldn't see it. By forcing it out, flushing it out of dormancy, you potentially make it vulnerable again. Vulnerable to the immune system or maybe to other therapies. Okay, so this isn't just suppression anymore. This is actively trying to root it out. Exactly. It's a shift in strategy. Yeah. And they showed it worked in the lab for the first time. Researchers successfully used this mRNA approach to expose HIV that was hiding in those infected cells. That's incredible. You mentioned the researchers, Dr. Paola Cervera, the first author. She said their goal was to hit the virus exactly where it hides. You can almost feel the excitement, can't you? She talked about seeing the mRNA successfully flush the HIV out. Oh, absolutely. Imagine working on this problem for years, knowing how stubborn these reservoirs are, and then you see your approach actually work making the hidden virus show itself. That's not just a data point, it's a massive step. A real eureka moment. You don't have to think so. It validates the whole strategy. It's the kind of breakthrough that keeps research going, you know. 
It offers genuine hope. And Professor Sharon Lewin, she's the director at the Doherty Institute, a big name in HIV cure research globally. Right. She put it in context. She said the work on mRNA for COVID really did spark new ideas for HIV. Her team's actually been working on this specific approach using mRNA and these specialized LNPs for HIV reservoirs for about five years. Ah, so it wasn't just an overnight thing inspired by COVID. No, it was a focused effort, but the pandemic definitely accelerated things, provided new tools and insights. Professor Lewin called this study one of the most exciting milestones in the journey toward a cure. That's quite a statement from someone like her. It really underscores how interconnected science is, doesn't it? Progress in one area lifting another. Okay, let's shift gears a bit. From the science to the, well, the human side. Our sources mention an HIV advocate, Heather Ellis, lived with HIV for over 30 years. And her perspective is really interesting. She sees the hope, obviously. Says this discovery gives people like her real hope. Mm -hmm. But she's also pragmatic. She reminds everyone it could still be years before clinical trials even start. And that's a crucial reality check. Science takes time, especially when moving from the lab to people. Rigorous testing is essential. But this raises an important question, something Heather Ellis really emphasized. Which is? Accessibility and affordability. She stressed that any cure, if and when it's developed, has to be accessible to everyone, not just the wealthy, not just in developed countries. That's a huge point. A cure that only a few can access isn't really a solution to the global epidemic, is it? Not at all. It's an ethical imperative, really. The majority of people living with HIV are in places with fewer resources. So any path forward has to bake in equity right from the start. How do we make it affordable? How do we ensure distribution? These aren't afterthoughts. They have to be part of the plan. It makes you think about the future Heather Ellis hopes for. A future without daily pills, without side effects, without that stigma that still unfortunately clings to HIV. Mm. That's the promise here, isn't it? Not just a medical treatment, but a chance at a fundamentally different life for millions. Absolutely. That's the ultimate goal. And thinking about the practical steps, Dr. Michael Roche, another senior author on the study, talked about what's next. Right. The roadmap. Yeah. First up is preclinical testing in animal models. Yes. Standard essential stuff. Checking safety, refining the approach, seeing if it works in a living system. And if that goes well. Then hopefully human trials. But that's a careful step-by-step -step process. Mm -hmm. It'll take time. And there will be challenges, no doubt. But the potential is immense. And this mRNA LNP approach. Yeah. It might not just be for HIV, right? You mentioned Dr. Roche had other insights. Yes, and this is where it gets even broader, potentially revolutionary. He pointed out that the types of cells where HIV hides these specific white blood cells are also involved in other diseases. Like what? Certain cancers, uh, autoimmune conditions, think lupus, multiple sclerosis, maybe some lymphomas. These conditions often involve problems with these very same immune cells. Okay, I see where this is going. If they can reliably and safely deliver mRNA to these specific cells using these LNPs. It could be a whole new way to treat those other diseases too. Exactly. It could open the door to entirely new therapeutic strategies. Imagine reprogramming or correcting faulty immune cells in autoimmune disease or targeting cancer cells hiding in similar ways. It suggests this isn't just about one virus. It could be a new platform technology with really wide-ranging applications. Wow, okay, so what does this all mean? Wrapping things up, it feels like just a few years ago, talk of a real HIV cure felt, well, almost like science fiction distant. But the pace of science, especially with things learned from mRNA development during the pandemic, it's just accelerated incredibly. We're closer now than we've ever been. Obviously, you need to temper that excitement. It's still early stages, years of work ahead, hurdles to overcome. But still, for millions, this represents tangible hope, courage, a promise of a genuinely better future. It really does. And that's why following this specific strategy, the mRNA the lipid nanoparticles targeting reservoirs is so important. It truly feels like it could be the path, the one that finally leads to eradicating the virus from the body, not just suppressing it. A future free from that daily medication, free from the underlying threat. It's a powerful motivator. So turning to you, our listeners, what stands out to you about this incredible development? What are you most excited or maybe curious about when you think about the future of mRNA technology, not just for HIV, but beyond? And just think about this for a moment. Imagine a world where incurable starts to become curable, not just HIV, but maybe a whole range of diseases, all tackled using variations of this one elegant technology platform. What other big medical mysteries do you think mRNA might help us unlock in our lifetime? Something to ponder. Mm -hmm.